G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder. Today we're going to be having a look at a plane that I have bashed in the past but it turns out that maybe it's a mix of me being wrong but also a mix of the meta being a little bit more favoured towards it. This is the Kfir C7 and when it was introduced to the game I absolutely loathed it because it was just not a good fit for the meta. It had a lack of radar guided missiles, it had barely passable AIM 9Gs uh, and it was just a little bit too bleedy in terms of its energy but now we have an opportunity to really explore the plane that is the Kefir C7 because of the change in the meta the MiG-29 and the F-16 are both uh, let's say restricted in their performance there's a couple of little things that make them a little bit uh, different to the rest of the aircraft in War Thunder but we can save that again for a later video uh, but the Kvir C7 has a really, really powerful engine, and that combines with the body of a Mirage, uh, sort of just the platform in general. It's extremely maneuverable, it does bleed a lot of speed, but of course with the engine you do negate some of that ne uh, that sort of uh, negative aspect. And this leaves the Kvir being a really good sneaky plane. It's a plane that can sneak up on your opponents, fire a 9G, give it about 3 kilometers, and you will almost every single time land a hit because most of the time they are not paying attention and of course they end up paying a repair cost. Now the Kfir is uh, definitely hard to fly, it's not an easy plane at all, but you know what I find that I've had a lot of rewarding dogfights and a lot of rewarding games in the Kfir itself, I've had some absolutely amazing kills. Uh, and some of them you might see here. Most of them are, however, with missiles. And I think that's just a matter of the top tier meta. Uh, and in fact, just the way of these aircraft where they tend to just get most of their kills with missiles because that's just the easiest way to get kills. Now, as you've noticed, I have redlined and pushed the plane up in altitude. Normally, this is not a very good idea because you end up being food for AIM-54s, but honestly, I say with this plane, go at it, because the AIM-54s, uh, they only have a 20G limit, and of course, being a Kvir, you can pull 12, 13 Gs for a couple of seconds, and of course, if you switch it up by going in multiple directions, you can spoof the AIM-54 and basically steer away from it very, very easily, even at very close ranges, particularly when it's heading directly towards you, it's picking up a lot of speed and these things are so fast that course correction is going to be a little bit difficult. Now, this uh, F-14 is not paying attention to me and because he's got really, really spicy engines, he ends up copying a really, really spicy missile. Now, this F-4J is not the same here. Uh, I barely scrape past with the head on and luckily we don't hit, but you know, that could have been a lot worse. Now, we have a couple of missiles and I'm just looking for the end of the uh, of the trails and just looking to see where these planes might be because that's a target that I can sneak up on. If these guys are firing AIM-7s, then that means that they have to keep their plane on target, otherwise they're going to miss and they're going to waste a missile. So if they're doing that, then I can potentially snag myself an easy kill, but I don't see anyone, so I'm just going to continue on. And uh, there we go, I spot another one at about 8 kilometers distance, heading up to the F-14, and there is a JA-37. I'm not sure if it's the C or D, but at the end of the day, the flight performance is almost identical. And of course, I'm well and truly above these guys. So... I have a very easy time coming down upon my opponents and of course remember that coming down is a lot easier because they are less likely to spot you from above than they are from below. Now I send one at the uh, F-14, I send one at the JA-37 and of course the missiles do strike very nicely on the JA-37 but the F-14 I am not so lucky so I'm just going to dive and you can see I'm picking up a fair bit of speed. I am using my air brakes here and turning off the afterburner so as not to uh, blow past the sort of uh, what, 1420 mark. I don't really want to push it above 1400 kilometers per hour uh, because that's when you start to rip. Now, I've got a lot of missiles heading towards me here. So I'm just going to go with a little smattering of flares and I'm just going to try and keep up my speed. I'm just going to do everything that I can to remain out of the path of these missiles. And I have an F4C, which is a fail squad, I believe, but that plane I don't really have a concern over. It's the F4J with the AIM 9Ds or the AIM 9Gs that I do have to be careful for. And of course, these planes can very easily gain me if I drop too much speed, and that is one of the downsides of the Kfir. But I've noticed that the enemies are now starting to spread out far and wide. The F 14 is coming in very hot and below me, so I'm going to be able to stick my head up a little bit 
roll over and re-engage at my leisure, which is excellent for what I want. Now, the F-14 goes down, leaving the F-4J, and the F-4J, I'm not even sure if he is paying attention, but that means that I can potentially get myself a very lovely kill. I've just got to lead the missile correctly, and there it goes. Hopefully it lands home, and if he doesn't switch off his afterburner, he is a goner. And of course, yes, he doesn't switch off his afterburner. Uh, we're going to go around to engage this F4J, and I'm out of missiles, so I have to go guns, guns, guns. Uh, and the F4J, he's he's pretty screwed because he doesn't really have very powerful engines. The Kefir will out accelerate him and outspeed him at sea level, and so it is only a moment of time before I manage to secure the kill provided that the F-16 does not do so first. <laughs> well, secure me rather. Well, the F-4J does get a little bit of a, a mercy kill here, but there's not really much more to it because the F-4J loses his radar, or his, his rudder, sorry, uh, and I managed to start to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this F-16, hoping to put it in as kill number five. You can see 13 Gs very, very casually, um, and sucko to the F-16 for not being able to do that. That's not, uh, you know, that's just the way the game is at the moment. We can discuss that later in another video. But the F-16 goes down to the MiG-29, um, and the F-4J is pretty much the last one left. He's tumbling to the ground, and that's pretty much it. The Kefir C-7 is a pretty good plane. It's, you know, it's not terribly great, but it, it's okay. It's, it's pretty okay. This plane does struggle. And there are plenty of matches that you will play where you will absolutely get ruined for like four or five matches in a row. But you end up having matches like these in the middle. And, you know, overall, you tend to do fairly okay. This plane does have the capability to do lots of little things. It has really, really good one-on-one -on -one engagement uh, properties. And, of course, we have those AIM-9Gs and that engine power. So early game, get above and try not to make yourself breakfast to AIM-7s or AIM-54s. Once you can do that, you're pretty much good. And as long as you can sort of be frugal with your ammunition and your guns, uh, you can get some fairly good games with some decent number of kills. Now, this F4J is pretty much oblivious, so I'm just going to fire a missile, and it tracks through the clouds. Now, I'm not really sure about tracking through the clouds, I'm not really sure if it should, uh, but it does anyway, and I managed to get the kill. The F-14 is going very, very ambitious with that missile. It goes nowhere. There's an F-16 on my ass, and it is starting to get very, very dicey. I think I can hear plane number three. The F-14 is looking super juicy. I'm going to go directly vertical to try and bleed a little bit more speed. We're going to roll around, and hopefully the F-14 comes back up for another engagement, but no. No, he decides that it is better off to, uh, instead of suiciding, play the plane properly instead of being an absolute idiot. Now, the F-16 forgets that his afterburner is very, very spicy, uh, but unfortunately for me, the F-4EJ absolutely ruins him first, and we have plenty of teammates here coming to the rescue, so we've got heaps and heaps of teammates around us, and that is the best way to play this plane. You are going to find that you will run out of energy in a dogfight very quickly. Much like the likes of the F, uh, the Vigan that I covered earlier, um, and some of the other lower jets, you will find that you do run out of speed very quickly, and that will really, really just make you frustrated, and it's very tough. But when you do get situations where you can really just make the AIM-9G shine, and where you can make the performance shine, particularly at low speed, low altitude, and low energy, you really do make the plane shine. Now. 1v1s is the Kefir's speciality, and so what we're going to do is put ourselves to the test. I have about 1270 kilometers per hour of airspeed, very, very rapidly increasing, but of course we can't hold on to that forever because we have an F-16 or an F-14 coming up behind us. Now I want to put it into a vertical to try and get this F-14 to play the slow game, and then bring him down to low altitude where I know that I'm going to be a little bit better. The F-14 and the Kefir are extremely similar in their flight performance, with uh, wings out and afterburners off at low altitude. And that's just down to the sheer amount of power that these planes put out in terms of their uh, their engines. And of course, the Delta Wing is very, very good for that AOA and that nose authority. Um, and of course, the F-14 has those lovely variable sweep wings, which give it some real good pull. Now, speaking of pull, the AIM-9G has some fairly good pull. And when you don't use that little thing called your, uh, your afterburner switch, where you turn it off, that ends up giving you a little bit of a hard time. Now, the BB-238, this guy, oh, that's a real threat. We're going to we're gonna deal with him super quickly, and there is a lovely little fire. That's pretty much all I'm going to waste on that guy, because the F-16 is the more important target here. This F-16 is going to be a bit of a tough one. He is 
you know, he's a great defensive flyer. You'll see it very, very uh, soon. Uh, but of course, a little bit of flaring and that uh, AIM-9L is going to go bye-bye. The F-16 is looking pretty slow. And when he's super slow like this, you can really make it uh, a very easy kill. So all you have to do is just line the shot up and easy as that, you get the kill. But it's not quite as easy because the F-16 has some very good sort of mid speed that like 600 plus kilometer or 600 to like 400, maybe 300 kilometer per hour. Uh, turning, it's pretty damn good. Now, this guy, I thought he was going to put it into the dirt, but he's got some really good mobility at the moment. He's just sort of going everywhere. He's doing his thing. He's just going to absolutely cancer roll everywhere. He's throwing the plane around. But of course, I have defa cannons, so I'm just going to spray and pray. And I have enough ammo because I've been conservative. And he's just going to go and spiral into the ground, which is a perfect result for me. This plane is pretty damn good in those situations where you either have a lot of teammates around you or you have the opportunity to really exploit a 1v1. And this is the absolute benefit of the Kvir. Once you get into a 1v1 and your opponents are sort of very, very slow, you bleed them of energy, you can exploit that because you've just got so much thrust there. And uh, I, I reckon you're a really, really light plane. So you can't, you can't really just sort of lose these you got to be careful of course but it's it's very very easy to just absolutely mince your opponents into nothing now this map here is probably one of the best for the kefir because it's a little bit smaller and it is uh, very easy to come around the back of your opponents and aim 9g them to help this is a really really strong map because all you do is you zoom around the edge you come up like i am and go for the first opponents that you see sort of at those lower levels so that's what we're going to do we're going to come in and look for those guys. There's an F-14, an F-16, but these guys are too far away and too fast to even bother with. So I'm gonna look for some targets that are a little bit further back. Now, you notice that this plane also has a radar, but it's not quite a traditional radar. It's more of a radar gun sight and radar targeting. So you can use it to sort of slave the AIM-9Gs, but I don't use it at all because I find that it ends up more of a hindrance. And of course, when you turn it on, you are now detectable by enemy RWR. So just for a little bit of sneaky breaky, we don't really use it. And honestly, I find that the best results come without using it. This F4E is the back of the pack, the F14, the F4J, they're all looking super, super juicy. So I'm gonna go for the F14, I see him as the highest target. Uh, the Harrier is also looking like a very important target because these guys, they'll give you a surprising amount of grief. Now, unfortunately for the Harrier, he manages to escape. And um, I think that's just because he turned right at the perfect moment. Uh, I do get the F-14 though, so that is a small positive to take with me. We're going to roll back over, and hopefully the F-4E is done with the Mirage, at least, you know, mentally done, not killed the Mirage, because we, we want him to survive, and I'm just going to send it right there. The MiG-23 MLD is looking juicy, but I can't really go for him right now. I'm just looking for an opponent who's putting his bum towards me, and the Harrier's looking okay, looking like a good target. If he's not going to see it, that's exactly what happens, and I get myself a very, very nice little kill here, which just leaves the MiG-23 and the MiG-29. Now, the MiG-29 has really decent maneuverability at super, super low speeds, so you have to be really careful with the MiG-29, but also the MiG-29 is a very, very strong plane in terms of its ability to keep away from your opponents. Now, this MiG-23 must have locked either an R-24R or an R-24T on me, because I don't know how I didn't manage to escape it. But, you know, that's just the way of War Thunder, and sometimes you will find matches like that where you've just done everything right, and then someone comes through with a radar missile, there's nothing you can do, and that's the end of the day. And that's one of the problems that I had when the Kefir was first released into War Thunder. It was just really tough to master, to sort of fit into that meta. But now that we have a little bit of an opening here with planes that don't really dogfight as well, particularly one-on-one, -on -one, uh, the Kefir has that little niche where it's able to, in the first say two minutes of a dogfight, you have a real edge before you properly bleed all your speed, before you're energy trapped, before there is pretty much no escape, you have that ability to just exploit your opponents and their lack of turning capabilities, particularly at those like 900, 800 kilometer per hour ranges uh, and all the way down into about 400 or 300, because when you start to, especially playing into the vertical, you'll find that the F-16s will be able to come and uh, sneak up on you. You'll find that the MiG-29s will be able to out-energy you, same as the F-14s. And of course, keeping it in that horizontal means that the airframe is basically maximally utilized. So here's one of our last matches here. I think this is the best match that I had in this plane. Um, although that's not really saying much. I do get the most kills, but I'll tell you what, that uh, sort of intro clip, I have had 
no better kill than that in the last like two years so that kill is just absolutely sublime and you'll see exactly sort of that being the capability of the kefir now like i said earlier the aim 54 is not really that much of a threat uh even the aim 7s if you play yourself smart keep your speed you can defeat them okay but you know what that likelihood falls quite sharply now the JA-37 is the first one to go here. He's at a very, very high altitude. So uh, that was a pretty much done deal. And at high altitudes, you don't really have that air, that drag that uh, limits your missiles. So the missiles do actually manage to sneak around a little bit quicker. They have just a little bit more over the breathing air jet engines that are at that higher altitude. So we are now going to sort of search for our next target. The MiG-29 is looking pretty good, but there are going to be enemies off to my left-hand side. I've just got to pick the right moment to strike and the right target. And I think the MiG-29 is closing decently. Uh, I think I'm going to be able to strike. And I am very, very confident in my ability, or in the AIM-9G's ability, to land the target. And of course it does. Now, the F-16 is also looking very, very juicy, but I don't really want to go for him. I think I would have to turn around too much. And there are plenty of good targets right ahead of me, like the F-14, who's not paying attention once more. He could very, very easily flare me if he had just seen the missile. The AIM-9G strikes home beautifully, and that is kill three of three. We've got a missile coming up towards us, but I do manage to get out of the way, and it is an F-4E. Now, the F-4E can sort of cut in. It's got those leading edge slats, the Agile Eagle upgrade, um, but this F-4E isn't having a look at me. He's rather going off to uh, sort of play with his play with his willy uh, and instead he gets a willy up his uh up his exhaust now the f4e is starting to come in for a dogfight. he's at a speed where he's not really turning as well the f4e has to turn at like above 600 kilometers at the very least otherwise you're really really pushing it because the uh phantoms are heavy boys they've got they've got two blokes in the cockpit two americans in fact and all those hamburgers are really weighing down the, the uh, poor little f4 phantom now I have to also be careful of my own speed. I have to be careful that I'm not in a uh, in a situation where I'm going to sort of bleed too much energy because at about 300 kilometers per hour, uh, maybe 250, you will tip stall out of the air and it is unrecoverable, especially in RB with the instructor. It's just a massive pain in the ass. So that is the Kvir. Five kills, very good match, and it sort of demonstrates the best way to play the Kvir. You sort of sneak around, get a few kills, go for unsuspecting targets, and you have a great day. So ladies and gents, thank you so much for watching today's video. I sincerely appreciate it. I'm meaning to stay on the content train, but I just have a bit going on at the moment. I've got uh, my my power supply is not really doing so well with the new RTX 4090. I think there's a capacitor issue, but until then, ladies and gents, thank you so much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.